Hello and welcome to Audionautic Deep Space Network, episode 74. This is the Independent Musician's Guide to Production and Promotion. Today, we're talking all about burnout. Just what is it and what are some ways to recognize and deal with the symptoms? First, we'll take a look at the definition as defined by the psychologist who coined the term, as well as some interesting studies on what might cause higher risk of burnout. And then finally, we'll discuss our own anecdotal experiences as musicians and our tips for dealing with it. This show is brought to you by our patrons, and each week we do the show live with them before it heads to YouTube and podcast feeds. You can head to patreon.com slash audionautic to join us and share your opinions on the stream as well as additional bonus content and hangouts. My name is Sun Warper and with me today is Eon Lake. There's no one before you. I can't, you gotta know it's you that's coming up, right? This time I knew it would be me. (laughs) Okay, good. Okay, good. I was worried. I was like, he might be thinking I'm gonna say Curtis first. What's going on? Uh, Well, you know, the usual, but um, I made sure, you know, being as dedicated as I am, to the podcast i've made sure that i'm nice and burned out for this one so that uh you're a method a method actor yeah Yeah, that's totally the reason and not the fact that my life is a mess or anything it's just uh, i mean they could go hand in hand (laughs) they can go hand in hand well i hope it's not too chaotic for you are you doing all right yeah yeah i'm good actually yeah i just uh you know i take this burnout thing seriously you know i can tell well that's good though because then hopefully you can give some real life advice on ways to you know work through it yeah it's a shame nobody wants any advice on uh, how to get burnt out because i could really help you there. <laughs> i don't think many people struggle with getting burnt <laughs> yeah. out. it's the, yeah. the after part yeah it's the after part how are you doing anyway you good i'm all right man i well this topic is actually very relevant to me as we talked about last week and that's why we mm-hmm. put it for the docket uh i've have been feeling pretty burnt out or at least recognizing the symptoms that could lead to burnout. It's been very busy. I've got a lot of life changes. The My first child's going to be born in uh, late August, early September. So like all this change, we've been remodeling our kitchen and that's been taking a very long time, much longer than we had hoped or expected. And um, yeah, so it, all of that, plus a lot of work stress and stuff like that, a lot of music things, it was like getting there. So I had to kind of take a step back and think about it. And it it was actually helpful doing the research for this episode because Curtis is unable to make it today, but he helped with the research. And we found some really interesting stuff. And um, I'm looking forward to getting into it. We've also got uh, one of our patrons in the green room. David will let you in in a moment. But before we get into our round robin, we've got a slight correction on X. Twitter, I guess we should call it. I don't know. Does anybody know the difference? Um, I, I saw this after I, I was editing the Cherry Audio episode last week and um, and saw this article about Zeets, which was a key part of last week's episode. And apparently Zeets is not true. Let me share this article. There's a USAA article that talks about Zeets and it says, one of the biggest questions that everyone's mind since the change, what are we supposed to call a tweet now? And apparently Musk answered a tweet asking that saying, that there's simply X's and there's no different terms, anything like that, just an X. Now, when I uh, go to Twitter now, it just lists these things as post. Like you don't tweet, you post. So I just wanted to give a quick correction that Zeet, as much as we liked or disliked it, isn't true, but that it was a viral post about, it looked like the Twitter business website and it was saying tweets will now be called Zeets, but it's not true. So I don't know, Ian. Like, does that allay your concerns about Z? Oh, yeah. or or do you do yeah. you miss the Z that Unless we hardly knew? That's cleared up. You know, there's nothing yeah. silly about it now. <laughs> what do you think about uh, Xing or X's? Exactly. I mean, come on. It's just changing things that don't need to be changed. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Pretty much. Yeah, and going off half cocked again, and we talked about this as a, a, a. I like to think of it less as a marketing strategy and more of an attention seeking ploy. Yeah, and that's yeah. what it feels like. You know, I I couldn't care less about this. I think it's <laughs> stupid. I think the names for it are silly. <laughs> Whatever, though. I mean, you know, I'm I'm determined not to give it too much of my brain power. Yeah, I did just want to post this correction because I didn't want to be mis- get yeah. misinformation. But I think it also shows the confusion and and mismanaged rollout of this to the fact that for the 
you know, for a week or whatever, this was trending that this was viral, that tweets are now zeets. And, and just, it yeah. was so confusing. Even like you were saying, the iPad app hasn't updated to X yet. So it's still Twitter. My iPhone app is now a, a X. But when I'm in, when I'm on my homepage and see the social media group tab that I have, it's still the little bird that's blue, like in that tiny little thing. But when I open it, it's this black X, like it's yeah. changed. And when you open the app, it goes to X and all that. It's, it's been very confusing. And I, 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 I just, I don't get it. I don't get why that was so necessary. Yeah. But no. before we get into the round robin, we've got some patron chat. Bendu is in the chat. Abby is in the chat. Hello, Shady hello. Rich is joining us today. Shady, how are you? And uh, Shady says, getting back into the music projects, did you have a break? I know Shady typically takes a break along with Hydro Fighter for a couple months, right? I think in the summer, Shady, let me know. And then uh, we've also got Survey Channel with a person turquoise waving. So yeah, a very, very exciting. So I think with that, we can move on into our round robin. We're doing things a little out of order because the focus right. today is burnout and so curtis was kind enough to make these overlays before he wasn't uh before he had his stuff to do today but since yeah. feeling the burn i'm feeling his <laughs> touch in the overlays yeah i know believe me that all the overlays are him and we appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah. let me get into this i've got an article from healthline that gives the definition by who it was coined by so let me just uh share my screen so i don't have curtis here to help me with all this today so I'm uh, I'm rolling it. So if it's a little slow, I appreciate you all uh, bearing with us. So let me see if this is popping up. Okay, so this is a Healthline article about burnout. So over mm. here in this section, what is burnout? They say coined by the psychologist Herbert Freudenberger, and sorry if I mispronounced that. In the 1970s, burnout describes a severe stress condition that leads to severe physical, mental, and emotional exhaustion. Here's their signs of burnout. So we've got exhaustion isolation, escape fantasies, irritability, and frequent illness. So those sound kind of familiar, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then I just, before we, we get into our own stuff, I also want to share, I thought this was really interesting, the 12 stages of burnout. So they say excessive drive or ambition, and this will tie into a study that Curtis shared with us that I'll show in a little bit, pushing yourself to work harder, neglecting personal care and needs, displacement of conflict, no time for non-work related needs, denial, withdrawal, behavioral changes, depersonalization, inner emptiness, depression, and then finally mental or physical exhaustion or collapse. So it gets pretty existential there by the end. But yeah. uh, it, it, it's interesting because I mean, as I read that, I'm like, oh yeah, some of this stuff makes sense. And it, I think it, it really, especially these first couple show where perfectionism and, uh, and things like that can come into play mm -hmm. in terms of being a mark for this type of burnout. Wouldn't you say, Ian? Like, Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that, that mental load has a lot that contributes to it. And uh, those kind of proclivities are uh, always going to have you thinking about things. And is it all right? Is it good enough? You know, this internal dialogue that contributes to the noise. Mm yeah that makes sense yeah and and that ties into well before i do that actually i mean it, just reading those it's interesting to see how it starts with drive and then it becomes kind of isolating yourself because of your drive and you lose out on the personal connections and because of that you start feeling lonely and then because of that you say it's just a cascading event and i think this will tie into some of the ways we'll talk about like our own ways of of working through burnout but before that there is actually a study that Curtis found. It's in athletes, but it's talking about uh, motivational implications for performing artists. And they found that perfectionism was a mark for burnout, that it was people who have and deal with perfectionism are more likely to get uh, burnout. And so I'll just quickly share that. Let me just share this screen and I'll put this, I'll put all these links in the chat for um everyone watching live, our patrons, but I'll also put it in the show notes if you're watching back on Anchor or YouTube. So real quick, here is the article or the study that Curtis found. So perfectionism, dysfunctional achievement, striving and burnout in aspiring athletes, the motivational implications for performing artists. So uh, I'm not going to go through this. I just thought this was an interesting study that Curtis found. And I'll just read off a little bit about what he said 
when he found it. So he writes, suggests that burnout itself can be caused by unfettered perfectionism. That is such a Curtis statement, unfettered, wouldn't you say? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He says, when we strive for perfectionism and then inevitably fall short of our own expectations, it can lead to dissatisfaction and burnout as we feel nothing will be good enough. In that regard, it feels a bit like a self-fulfilling prophecy, really, doesn't it? Because, I mean, you strive for perfection. I mean, nothing is perfect. We know this. And ironically, although I've got perfectionist tendencies myself, it's something I've kind of stamped out a bit in as far as music is concerned because I'm aware of how counterproductive for me it is. Um, Of course, I want it to be as good as it can. You know, I don't need to sort of obsess about it in that way. But... um, for anyone who does, I imagine that's going to contribute. Yeah, definitely. And chat, I'm curious to hear, has anyone been dealing with burnout or did any of these signs of burnout ring a little too true for you? Let us know in the chat. Um, and also, if you have any tips for dealing with burnout, also let us know there. Uh, but with that, we're going to let in our patron, David. He's been sitting in the green room. David, just give me a thumbs up if you're ready to pop in. Okay, perfect. All right. We'll let him in. David, what's going on? Very hey. much. How, do I sound all right? Is every, I yeah. The headphones. It was it's a, it's like, I was going to message you. I, th- I saw it because I can see all the people in, in the green room. And yeah. I saw you messing with it and you didn't look happy. And I was about to message you, but we went live. I was like, don't worry about it. I, I think the echo will be fine. If right. anybody no, perfection. Hears an echo, no perfection. No perfection. <laughs> yeah, we got right? This episode's all about dropping perfectionism, but we've got <laughs> echo cancellation turned on through StreamYard. But if anybody is hearing mic echo or anything, let us know. And and all of us here, Ian Lake, ASAP, uh, David, if you're hearing any echo, just let us know. We'll try yeah. to fix it. But otherwise, probably what it's going to be. But I, I think everything's sounding pretty good, at least on my end. But I have an air conditioner blasting. So oh, I beyond the stomping. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. This the noise cancellation seems to work. So when I was listening yeah. back to the last episode, when I was editing it, I didn't hear any of the air conditioner. And this thing is loud. I mean, it's yeah. I have noise canceling headphones and it's still just like just in the background. Well, but I pre- appreciate you having me on. It's a really it's a heavy subject for sure. No, we're really happy to have you on. I mean, we love having you, David, and all of our patrons on to give their two cents and um, and just share their own experience with it. Because, I mean, that's the whole point of the show is as we always say together we grow. I liked what you were saying on the discord all that stuff. And I want to talk about, especially the way you were saying about the good old days. And I don't know if you saw what I commented back with you about, like, I mean, the good old days weren't perfect either in terms of like, well, internet versus A&R labels and stuff. Yeah, this, this is, um, yeah, it's a good launching point if it's okay. Um, Because I really didn't. That was kind of a stream of consciousness moment. And I know we quickly get into a nostalgia kind of vibe with all that and that's not really what the point was i think the point was and we, a lot of this we know right the, the things have sped up right and there's no question um whether regardless of what age you are or experience level things have sped up and it's been happening for you know close to 20 years but it's getting really bad and i think my point was that what we're maybe oh no don't do that to me um one of the one of the biggest things i see is an accelerated um level of burnout versus maybe in the past Mm -hmm. so what you would see before is maybe you know a lot of times a band or a group really grinding for maybe a few years right and then saying i'm done right it just Mm. with a lot of these things kind of that you showed on that list from curtis um being part of it what you're seeing now is what i'm seeing is the the extremeness of the burnout people are quitting you know Mm. i've known youtubers that were very successful that um just destroyed their page they got rid of everything i mean just to level of just Mm -hmm. um i've seen so i think what it i think one of the most important things and again i was writing a lot of notes while you were talking what is a realistic expectation because that is driving a lot of this right yeah um it's a good point. Well, I think, David, just really quick, I think you brought up, we should probably, let me actually read that Discord uh, note, if you don't mind what you wrote, because I think it's very important. And I, I, one thing that I thought was very interesting that you were mentioning is, especially now in the internet age, if you're a starting artist uh, or a musician in general, creative in general, you kind of have to wear every hat, right? 
unless you've got the money to back it, but it, that that's like the chicken and the egg because to be an artist, you you know, to to be a successful artist, you'd be successful, but you have to wear all these hats. So you'd either pay or this and that, but you have to be your marketing. You have to be the creative. You have to write the copy. If you're doing YouTube, if you're doing anything like that, if you're making press releases, you have to wear all of these different hats. And I think from what you were saying as well, and as you're saying now, that's an accelerant of burnout because maybe you're a creative and you don't want to focus on the marketing or you don't want to be social. You want to just make music or you want to make art. And now to make a successful career out of your art, or if that's all you want to do with your life or something, you have to wear all these hats basically. And I, I think that is something that can lead to burnout. Um, and let me just share. So do you mind if I just read what you wrote? David? Okay. So he says, burnout appears to happen much quicker than the good old days. That's the new silent killer for musicians. That happened after maybe 10 years before. And at that point, you had some very useful skills. Now everyone has that skill, to some extent after a couple years perceived, and figuring out who is legit is so difficult. And worse, so few have any concept of the business side, which they must now handle. That's what I was mentioning as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So the sharks move in to mentor you. And that's in quotes, mentor. He says, no, thank you. I have seen this with fledging small businesses, people offering all sorts of help for a cost, and it's very hit or miss on who has the ability to steer you right without extracting from you. And that's quite true. I mean, even just look on Instagram, how many times a day do you get a message that's like, hey, for $500 or for a small fee, you can get 12,000 streams, which of course comes from bots, which is going to get you kicked off of Spotify if it catch if it gets caught or anything like that. Um Right. So yeah, or or anything. Do you want to grow your social media? You get a message, and it's like for five hundred dollars, we'll give you a hundred thousand followers, or you know, some ridiculous number. And I mean, it, it's all just fake. It's all vanity, and it's it's easy to get confused in the vanity versus what's real. And I, I think all of this contributes to an accelerant of burnout. Wouldn't you guys say, Ian? Like, what do you think? Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I, I mean, I think one of the, one of the things that causes burnout in me more than anything is is information overload holding too many things in my head and having to juggle them <clears throat> for very long periods of time it's extremely tiring and wearing and um you know everything about being an independent or a musician or on a small label these days is it's just this there's so much to the hustle there really is it's like you're saying so you know if you have a busy life you know if it's your side hustle and you uh, you work full time as well you know that the, the, never has it been so easy to get overloaded you know really yeah. has it and uh, from the way that information is beamed at us 24 7 to you know the, the the sort of levels of information you have to absorb as part of your daily life plus anything else you're doing it's just unrelenting you know and and i yes. think the only thing that you can do when it gets too much is is to um is to restrict that and withdraw a bit and um you know regroup you well know, i think that that gets us it. i'm sorry Jan, like say again because everyone has their limits right i mean definitely you have to listen to your your mind and your body when it's complaining and telling you something's wrong because you know you start to malfunction you can see some of the the list of things the symptoms that they gave of um of uh overload and and uh what it can be like i mean you gradually withdraw from everything and lose all your sense of perspective and that's how it snowballs and self-perpetuates yeah. i think you need to decide you know where your limits are ration things out understand what's negative for you I mean, some of it has to be done right but um you need to try and provide some balance to that i think so when you're not doing something that involves you know information something that you have to do you need to try and seek out peace and so on you know I do, curtis and i do that do that through meditation but i mean you know you don't have to you could be walking a dog you know just getting in the countryside or whatever yeah nature yeah. is probably one of the best ways exercise hold on Ian. like well yeah. you're getting into you're the recommendations <laughs> you're getting into the recommendations but i i I'm i was uh, <laughs> yeah well no we'll get there we'll get there but i i want i think david had some other notes and i i went off because 
I thought it was a good jumping point. But David's for, absolutely uh, right. It's worse today than than it's ever it's, been. It's and true, it, but it's, I, I think he might have more to say. I just I had, I wanted to give some context to his earlier discussion. No, and we went off a little bit. Yeah. So uh, before we get into, we will get into some recommendations, and those are really good. Uh, but David, if there's anything else you want to add, I, I think your mic's muted as well. By the way. Okay, oh yeah. yeah, just trying to keep those noise um we appreciate it (laughs) it's such a huge topic um what what i've noticed and i like to you know for better or worse when i get on some of these social media i like to have conversations and they're sometimes misconstrued as maybe that i'm trying that i have an agenda which is um really just knowledge and being helpful and um but my point being that what in it, what I have seen, what I've noticed is people tackles get up real quick over a lot of topics. Um, if you start asking them, well, what is your financial? How much are you trying to make a month? What? Why is? You know, what? What is your goal? Do you understand what you're spending? You know, um, very. They're tough questions, and they can. They're very stressful, and when. Most people check out almost immediately um, because what they're not what they're not realizing is their brain actually is very aware of what I'm saying to them. They don't want to go there. So I I think in a weird way, in the past, we had this idea that you get signed and then someone kind of takes this off your plate. Right. So take the management and all this. We know what the bad stuff. Let's just forget about that. Let's just think psychology then I'm going to be able to just tour and write music, right? And that's what we think of when we think of a lot of these successful bands, right? They're just sitting around and, um, you know what I mean, taking breaks. And But we all know that that's not how it started, right? Um, but they had kind of a plan. There was a, old, there was a template in the past. Um, what is it now? Because, and when is the end point? This is the thing I think that is driving so much of the stress. When do we get there? What, what is it? If if we have to get there. Right. Well, like, I think that's the interesting part, right? Is that I think it's subjective now rather than an objective goal of, oh, I'm going to get seen by a label and I'm going to get picked up. And don't forget, I mean, yeah, it's nice if we just ignore all the dark stuff of that timeline. But I mean, it wasn't all sunshine mm-hmm. and rainbows, you know? And, and, and not to mention, you now or you back then had the gatekeepers of the only way to get really big and known was A&R labels. And they had ulterior motives sometimes. I mean, how many times has a label Mm. picked up a band just to kind of push them to the side so that another band that's similar can shine? I mean, Rick Beato in a lot of videos talks about things like this and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I, I think you're right. It's it because that was the basically one way to do it back then. It was a lot. You had a trajectory, you had a structure. Now you have to make that structure and it's, it's very ethereal and you kind of have to define it for yourself. Like what are the goals? And then yeah. there's, you have to figure out, which is also stressful, how to get to where you're the goals you said. It's no longer, okay, I want to be a musician. So I need to get, play a bunch of shows, get seen by A&R, get picked up by a label profit. You know, that was like, and, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm streamlining it of course, but mm-hmm. like now it's, I mean, that's still some kind of way you could do it if you're a pop artist or something, but if you're doing independent music and you have a certain genre you're going for, you have to define all these different things. And you're right. I mean, this leads, to, I would think, to much more burnout. I mean, for me, like my trajectory has now gone much more to the podcast we do, my own YouTube, more educational stuff. But then I also do my music and that's doing decently as well. So it's like figuring out, OK, I could do all these smaller things that all add up into the end goal. That's kind of like the trajectory I've mapped out. And that's what's working for me. But it, like I said, I was feeling some burnout. I wouldn't say my burnout comes from the music. It comes from the external factors affecting my music and then making me stressed because the music and these things are suffering due to the external factors. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, especially in your circumstances. Go ahead, Ian. <laughs> no, I was just saying that, that does make sense to me. And I and I don't know if you can really expect that to go away. I mean, if you become immensely successful, all right, there are people who will take some of the load off, but there's a load of other stuff that comes in as yeah. well. So I think, I mean, 
I'm thinking about what David was saying earlier. I mean, one question you may need to ask yourself is that if you have to sustain this indefinitely, is this level okay? You know, is this mm -hmm. something that you can keep up? Yeah. And, and how long do you intend to do that? And I mean, I don't have time frames on what I'm doing, but I very much have an eye on how much I want to be absorbed in this and doing it and how much spare time I have to do it. So, um, and I'm constantly watching its effect on me because it has been negative at times, you know, as you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think it's be realistic about what your limits are and uh, how long you want to grind for. I mean, you may think, you know, this is all right. I can do this. I could do this indefinitely. I love music. I'm happy. You know, or if you're trying to set up a business, you could say, well, for, for financial reasons, you may give yourself a time limit for that to actually get to a certain level. But if you're not being realistic about what that level is, what your income needs to be and and how long you can <laughs> work your way up to that income, then uh, you probably need to think some more. Yeah, definitely. David, anything you want to add before we start getting into some of our recommendations? And you guys, if you want to share, like I was mentioning with mine, anecdotal experience with your, like how you deal with burnout, how you've dealt with burnout before, if you noticed it happening, what you did. I mean, it might bleed into recommendations, but I think it's important that we as independent artists share our own stories, you know, to, to help mm -hmm. anyone listening who may be going through something similar. But what it looks well, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking, um, it's also a really lofty kind of, I don't want to say profession. Um, being an you know, being a musician, being an artist, it's it's in and of itself is is so intense. And trying to be the best you can, trying to find the best qualities of yourself, trying to gauge how to project those how to deal with other people's, you know, so, and then you've got this other aspect. So I, I just think this talking about it being really, uh, well, we're, that gets to the next level, but I think I'll just say that it's real. Burnout's real. Mm. It, it is occurring. There's a reason it's occurring. Um, it's not about there's, a, you know, the old times are better, this or that. It's just where we are right now as a society. And I do believe that it's probably the number one, you know, killer, and not physically, you know, but. Artistic killer? Burnout, motivational killer, destroyer of passion and drive for artists. Mm, um, even with all the wonderful, and we, there are a lot of, look at this what we're doing it is unreal you get to meet so many great people but it is it is the other dark side and we it's as long as we're really kind of just we're open about it and, and you know accept it i think we'll get to the next part how we deal with it right so i think that's huge to recognize it yeah you know like just just Definitely. even reading those couple of things from that healthline article and it's like oh yeah yeah Oh, okay. I can yeah. see where that would lead to that part. Like, oh yeah, I can see being like, I have no time for this. And then that, you know, like the cascade. So you recognize it. And I think that's one of the best tips um, for recommendations and tips in general. But um, do Eon Lake, do you have anything else you want to say before we get into the recommendations? Don't, don't get back into the, like, you, as far you... as what it looks like, I could definitely, yeah. I mean, the thing yeah, is, yeah, I would love to hear. I mean, unchecked, it, it changes who you are, unless who you are is quite a narky upside person to start with. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming that you're not, <laughs> um, it, it can make you extremely irritable. It can change your relationships with, you know, the people that, uh, that are closest to you. Um, it, it represents a huge loss of perspective and where a certain aspect of your life is just dominating everything else. I mean, again, you saw that in the lists. And um, I think I once read that one of the main contributors to stress is to have a lot of responsibility without much agency. So <clears throat> being responsible for things that you struggle to have an effect over. And 
if you take that in a musical context, you know, trying to build a career, invariably it means a lot to the individual. And, um, and it's not necessarily easy. And so <laughs> it sets itself up as a, as a good feeder for, for stress to get you into a situation where you're burnt out. It also can provide a million things for you to have churning around in your head from, you know, how technology works, how synthesis works, how you know, recording techniques, blah, blah, blah. There are industries that are built you know, in and music and adjacent to music that work on the premise that you're missing something, you know, the whole, if you just know this trick, you know, you'll sound like a pro or whatever, or it's just this bit of kit you're missing and so on. And they're all coming in with this sort of, you're just missing out on this thing and oh, you just need to watch this and it's just a bombardment. You add those three things up already, it's, you know, a bit of a heady cocktail. So if you find yourself struggling to remember things and getting tetchy with people and, you know, not sleeping well and always being tired and so on, these are this is the thin end of the wedge, you know, and it <clears throat> it generally gets worse if you don't do something about it. It's a lot easier to get in a state than it is to get out of one. So I think being able to spot negative tendencies and the fact that you're just struggling a bit and could do with a bit of a break early makes it much easier to deal with you know the worse it gets the longer the recovery period yeah yeah that's true well on that topic of recovery let's get into those <laughs> recommendations oh, right stop there. Yeah. david as our guest do you want to start do you have a couple i was just thinking share? And I was thinking about your your uh, your new uh, new friend coming into the world. Um, and one <laughs> one of the really cool things that um, uh, that happened to me was having them, and then having this boost of energy come in, this playfulness. So I was just thinking, you know, I've got like these dice and all these things. Uh, Let me zoom in on you there. Hold on. There it is. Here we go. You know, I got dice. And you, you see this in people's studios. You know, these little. You know, um, God dang. Oh, here, sorry. Hey. <laughs> and I didn't really understand it. Well, I did, but I did until right now. And I realized that on some level, it's my, it's a reminder that this is a fun place, right? This is, mm -hmm. yep. this is not, this is, well, what are you doing? You know what I mean? All this other stuff, like this is a gift, right? And it is a gift, right? Um, everybody's creative different ways but this is our gift right yeah. and it's it's yes. awesome it's awesome yes. it's not competitive um so i think the first thing is to remember that you know and just um you know try to embrace that part of it now the hard part is gets back to the realistic expectation that's the one that i still i kind of have a idea in my head right but man I, it's all over the map when I listen to people and I feel like we'll call them predators. Um, the mentors prey on those people, the people that really don't have, they have some wild ideas about, you know, what they think. And it really is going to lead to burnout. That's the connection, right? Really mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're going to crash and get really upset and be wonder why it didn't happen. And the worst thing someone can hear is, you didn't work hard enough because that is not the problem right now. People are yeah. working plenty hard. Yeah. yeah. Anybody that says that, that gets my hackles up. That 24-7 like grind, right? Yeah. Got to yeah. grind every don't, minute, every moment of the day. Yeah, that's your Which problem. Which right there right? is a sign of the, I mean, that was one of the things that the burnout list was talking about of signs of it is that yeah. no time for uh, personal things, all business, you know? Like, and grind, and you know, like, oh, I got to. Yeah, you know, yeah. Isolation, loneliness, like that's all. I mean, you could just hear it. If you're grinding 24-7, you're literally isolating yourself to work on that, right? Yeah. 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 And plus, I don't, I don't necessarily subscribe to the fact that music should be hard work. You know, when you're trying to be creative, I mean, being playful, I find, is a lot more productive than working really hard on something, you know, for a really long time. You know, the best stuff I've done, I'm, 
was the easiest stuff I've done. You know, and it's a, a, a lesson I learned a long time ago. I know you have two son, Wolf, but it's just <laughs> working hard on something is almost ensuring it's mediocre. So, you know, that grind, I think maybe you could apply it to the, you know, all the satellite activity around music. But the actual thing itself, it's, you know, it's art, it's muse, it's an elusive human quality that disappears if you don't look after the human. I mean, it's it's the goose that lays the golden eggs, isn't it? If yep. you don't look after yourself, if you're run down, if you're in a state, you're not feeling positive, you've got no energy, what kind of music comes out of that? I mean, all right, there are dark forms of music, but even those <laughs> forms of music are better with a bit of energy behind them. Yeah, you're so right about the less time. Those those songs are usually the best. Like, I mean, both internally and also from external analytics the three or four of my top songs were ones i did maybe in a day or like i wrote and recorded everything in a day and then mixed in maybe another day and at first i used to get so mad at that because i'd be like oh i spent all this time on these other songs and they they get nothing you know like crickets and then these ones that i just did real quick but it's like that's the flow state that's being in the moment and capturing that where you're at in that single moment and not stressing. You're literally just going with, I mean, for lack of a better word, the flow that you're in in that moment, recording these things as they pop in your head. And you're like, wow, that's perfect. It's done. And boom, you've got it. And no. I, I don't think those songs are bad. Like, I know I did them quickly, but that's not to mm -hmm. their detriment. That was no. me being in that moment. And I think that goes into a few of the recommendations we're talking about. Remind yourself why you get into music. Like yeah, it's, it's not just a hobby, but it's something to express your feelings where words fail, right? Like, at least for me, mm -hmm. like I, I may not be able to express what I'm feeling, but I can get it out when I just play the guitar and on that fretboard, I can really share who I am and what I'm feeling yeah, in a way that I can't with I, words. If you think about why that might be, I mean, if you think about all the causes of stress and uh, anxiety and burnout, they're the exact opposite thing to doing music really it's a different part of your brain you know from a psychological perspective is what they call the default network the constant internal dialogue the log logical rational part of your mind that wants to problem solve everything and is you know doing that which has become in our society really 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 overused and then the other side of your mind is 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 the part of your mind that if you're on a bicycle flying down a hillside, you know, inches from death, having the time of your life, feeling really alive and connected to the moment and not thinking about any stocks or shares or, you know, maths or anything like that. Those are your two poles, right? And one of them is artistic and one of them isn't really. You know, so when you're in your flow state or when you're playing, you get, playing an instrument is a perfect example because it uses a completely different part of your brain. Yeah. Doing anything like that that you're good at um, has a similar effect. I mean, I used to juggle a lot. That had a, a, another similar Wait, effect. You, you juggle? I did, yeah. Oh, dude, we got to see that. Lot. That we got to see that you don't have to do it now. I'm put, not putting you on the spot, but in an upcoming episode, and not while I'm gone on paternity leave, you have to juggle. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I would love to see that. You don't have to, don't worry. But I, that's awesome. Either way, you know, uh, you need to be aware, I think, that they're different states yep. of mind, and you need yep. to cultivate them, and especially. The, the being present, the direct experience as opposed to default network. You know, one you live and breathe every day, and the other one is one that, I don't know, you live in when you're a child more, perhaps, mm -hmm. where you're not thinking about outcomes or whatever, you're just goofing around. And I think that's the kind of state of mind you need to be more in. So it's very easy to get into this noise state but it's really hard to switch it off and get some peace and try and you know sit down and do some music you know like we've joked about this in the past where you just work all day well work, 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 sit down right 20 minutes the best music ever go <laughs> you're already <laughs> setting an unrealistic yeah uh, i mean thing you're is right there trying it's gotta be transition perfect. from one to the other and and you kind of need tools to help you do that so 
maybe yeah. we should talk about some of those. Yeah, I have a few practical tips that I'd like to share. Some just in general and some if you're trying to like what I, for me trying to doing this for a living and full time that help when you really can't do some of the first few recommendations. But before, uh, David, is there anything you want to add? You know, if not, it's fine. I, I know well, I, I caught you on a mic. Some, I always have something to add. <laughs> well, I caught you on a mic. Don't I saw ever, you go like, I saw you go ever, and get it muted. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, talk about what we're the cat. I, I'm oh. managing this. I'm like watching this. No, oh, we what? need the cat because we're missing Steve from Curtis. So no, we, need a, we need a surrogate Steve here. Steve Altina <laughs> couldn't make it. <laughs> I think, um, well, first thing, it, you took the flow state out of the words right out of my mouth. Um, and that is something we hear a lot now. It, mm. One thing I'll say with flow state, we think we did it so easy, but it was the flow state. We really put in a lot of work for those easy songs. They were yeah. not, they, they right. just came out because of that thing, you know, that. Um, That's a very good point, David. Yeah. And it's easy to forget. Um, the other thing, you know, my one, one, one thing I, I do a lot now is, and I got this from my dad is you know, as a painter is I, 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 I talk about this. I sketch a lot. I don't go down saying I'm going to write a song. I just, and the fun thing about sketching is it's a little less, um, stressful. It's really explorative. And I just kind of get in sound design very much typical writing phase. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, there it's just sketching and i'll just do and i'm getting to the point where i'll do a few a day five ten you know they'll build up and and i don't care how many i'm getting to the point now maybe i'll do 20 30 for this next release i'm just i kind of know when i think it's good but i i'm not sure and i don't really care anymore i just i just keep doing them and go when i'm ready in a different state i'll go listen to them all um but it does kind of it's fun and it gets mm -hmm. back to that. And and um, last thing I'll say is you got to be kind to yourself. And it, it's a life. It really is a life lesson. It's a life lesson um, that we talk about a lot in our families and stuff. I'm like, you got to be kind to yourself. No negative talk. Right. It's so destructive. So just yeah. try your best not to recognize when you're doing it. Right. And just yeah. go, whoa. Okay because it'll create a false reality. You could be writing beautiful music. People are telling you you're writing great music and you're just... Yeah. So imagine how that contributes to burnout when you've already just put all this effort in and you should be rewarding yourself at that moment. Instead, you're destroying yourself and that's got to lead to burnout. I got to believe. So yeah, that's it, Mike off. Sure. I think you're right. I think you're right. That's that's deep. Yeah. Um, I... I, I really like what you were saying about um just the negative thoughts and 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 also not just stopping yourself from it because that's also gonna have some issue but recognizing i think is the best word right there like you you said it recognizing when those negative thoughts come and go oh, okay that's my perfectionism that's my this that's my that uh you know anything like that and just being like it's okay you know you don't have to be like get away like no no but just recognize it and and just mm. sit with it for a second and be like, yeah, okay, I understand where you're coming from, but it's okay. And I think that leads perfectly to my first tip. Uh, and, and this one has really changed my whole approach to music production because when I started making music, it took years to finish a song. My first EP, I started in 2010 and I didn't, I started when I was a freshman in college in 2009, 2010, and I put it out in 2013 and it was five songs. It took forever. And and really, what was I doing? One week, I'd be changing a bass volume, and then I'd change a bunch of other stuff. And then five weeks later, I go, oh, the bass is too low now. Okay. And then it, like, so my point is, what I learned was instead of perfect, think of songs and anything as you're trying to get them to be impeccable, but not perfect. That's kind of the word out of perfect. Impeccable is like, okay, this is good enough for me to go, yep, I can get this out. There's the cat. All right, perfect. <laughs> I can be at peace now. We've got a cat in the video. We need it. <laughs> yeah. Back to the point, though. <laughs> we, um, If you go with impeccable, it's kind of that out. It's It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be excellent. And those are terms you can define for yourself. And that's one of the reasons I've switched so much to Dawless work for my YouTube videos, for anything 
I mean, yeah, for commission work, I still go in the DAW and stuff, but it's a way to kind of just be like, well, this is what it is, and I'm going to present it as that. And I think there's a that's a form of beauty and art in itself. Like you, <laughs> sorry, I just saw a comment from, <laughs> from Shady Ridge. I think because of my college years, he says, "God, I'm old." <laughs> oh right, yeah. <laughs> and when they were, yeah. And he I like said, "What made you say that?" I'm assuming yeah. it's that, uh, but <laughs> sorry, Shady, I I just have to be my authentic self, right? And, and yeah. talk about it, but <laughs> but that's what I love about these dollars things. Like when I record into the sampler, like that is what it is. And the song I've made and recorded to a DAW is a two track. That's it. And yeah, I could re-record it, but just live with it. That's it's presenting who you were in that single moment. It's a time capsule. But my point being is that it's just, you don't have to make these things perfect because there is no such thing as perfection yeah. and you can chase it and you can chase it, but you never get there. So I like having this word of impeccable. That's my kind of, like the, the gap of impeccable kind versus of moments perfect. in time as well, aren't they? I mean, they're, they're, exactly. It's you at that stage of your development in the way that you were doing things then, doing that song. I mean, you know, you do the same song five years later, it would sound different because you're yes. different and it's a reflection of you and just make your peace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. And then a couple other things, and these. I just find really help. Like I was telling Curtis one day when I was really stressed, I was like, I just went to the gym and did my a heavy rep of bench press, like warmed up, obviously. And I just moved like the heaviest weight I could just to like motion, but also exercise. You can walk, you can do whatever, do wall pushups. Like if, you know, just do something, get out. Like you were saying, Ian, like, I don't want to steal your thunder, but exercise will tie into, I'll le I'll let you talk about going outside, but, uh, doing some form of exercise, just getting the blood flowing, getting some movement. Walking is great. I mean, it, it opens mm -hmm. your mind up. The, when I can't think of stuff, I take a walk because usually right then and there, my mind will open and I'll be like, problem solved. Oh, that's what I was looking for. You know, it's just doing that. But yeah, it, it the weightlifting is almost, I don't want to say it's like aggressive. It's not, but it's just kind of getting those emotions out by moving something that's heavy and just doing something. But again, like I said, walking, anything even just squat get up and down on a seat on the couch you know just do a squat 10 reps just get some blood flow it's good for the brain it's good for everything yeah you know, like you were talking earlier and i know i stopped you about outside so uh yeah, would you mind sure. carrying on well yeah i mean for me i mean exercise is an absolutely probably top of the pile for things that can help you relieve stress and to change your state um and and you're kind of looking to do both a bit really aren't you um, <clears throat> so exercise is good, but I, I think also for me, nature is a, is a big relief, you know, um, fresh air and a different environment and to, uh, you know, we are, <laughs> we are natural creatures. We came from nature, you know, we are flawed in the same way as any other living thing is i think it's time to sometimes just take a break remember where you came from remember there's an entire world out there you know and beyond that you know we're stood on a ball of rock in space and all the rest of it you know it's, it's the, the first thing to go is the perspective and the, and whatever triggers that you find useful for you that give you perspective again i love to be by the coast i love the sea calls to me it, it, it stirs things up in me so anything like that i i find particularly um not just relaxing but also um encouraging mind opening mind. would you say yeah yeah I mean, the mind yeah definitely well we've said before as well i mean you've got to live life if you want to write music about life you know you need to actually live a bit yeah <laughs> do stuff you know, anything that gives you your sense of perspective back. And if you are so inclined, then, you know, the inward journey and meditation, things like that can help. Mm -hmm. But I think also doing something that you're quite good at. So for you, it could be guitar, you know, because you're pretty adept, right? I mean, you say yourself, you just play guitar for half an hour or something. I mean, you so, said it, not me. 
so I'm, I'm not bragging about it. I know, but I mean, <laughs> you know, for me, it could be playing drums, it, it could be juggling, it could be doing something else, you know, but just something that is um, a skill that you've learned that you're quite good at, that uh, I find it changes the way that you think and helps you to let go of some of the day to day and um, start to refocus a little bit. And I think if it is, you know, playing an instrument rather than, and besides which, if you're going to do a recording session, you want to make music, why wouldn't you warm up like you're in the gym? You know, you don't want to pull a muscle. <laughs> you want to pull a musical muscle. That's true. <laughs> that's cold. true. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Warm that's, up. That's true. I, I think, too, that you were getting to a point, the next point that I want to talk about. And mm. um, Shady, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I would love to hear if part of your whole thing with taking that two month break. Yeah, I asked earlier how long those breaks are. He says about two months. Um, and that is taking breaks, but I'm curious, is that part of it for you, Shady? And I, I know we talked with you previously about the breaks. We have a Audionautic episode on the YouTube channel where we interviewed Shady about this, but taking a break can definitely, even a day, even an hour, even you know, however long you can do, a week, a month, give you some perspective and just get your mind off of all these things. I'd be curious to hear if from the chat and also Ian Lake and David, like I find when I'm really stuck in a song, right? And I've been working on it for a long time and it just, I keep tweaking something and nothing ever comes out right. I step away for at least a day. And when I come back, I usually go, I don't even know what I was hearing. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of if I would have just stayed with it, I would have tweaked things endlessly to the point where it completely ruins the song, right? Like I raise the hi-hat, lower it, raise this, raise that. And now what I had that would have been perfect had I just taken a step back or impeccable, yeah. I should say. It would have been impeccable, not perfect. When I go back to it, if I had got stuck in it and done all those changes, it'd be far worse than just taking a step back yeah. and coming back to it. That's what I, I can't really work on one song. I, it, it's got to be, you know, at least three, but probably more like 20 or more. Because it's the only way, I mean, it, when you don't have your full objectivity, then the next best thing is to have the sort of objectivity where you're working on that many songs that you can dip between them and yeah. kind of get your your level that way, your frame of reference that way. Yeah. David, what about you? Well, that, yeah. You know, I was talking about the sketching, so I related to that, Ian you know, like, you know. Yeah. I, same way, I never work on one song. That mm -hmm. would be, I would, I just can't imagine doing that. N not like I'm shading anybody because some people are really. Yeah. Yeah, we all have our own workflows. I, I, it was in you know the nature and a lot of stuff I really um, I relate to. I think for me one of the I I didn't write at all in twenty twenty two. I don't know. It, it's just a really weird year. Um, but um, one thing I do, even in my studio, I like to. I've been watching a lot of old movies, um, all sorts of stuff, film noirs. Um, I I kind of. I, one thing I realized about myself was that um, there's a lot of stories going on in my mind. And so I like to just, you know, sometimes I come down to the studio and if I don't really want to, I, I don't know what I want to do. You know, I'm not ready to start turning on all the instruments. I'll put on a movie and I might get on my drums too and just kind of play along, do some rudiments. It's mm -hmm. very Zen when you talk about meditating. And I know you understand, I'm like, guitar can be the same way, but drums is very physical. So when you're talking about physicality, um, it's an unbelievable instrument for just. I didn't even uh, notice. Is that a, a electric drum set? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I, saw. I yeah. looked back and I was like, you know what? That looks like a drum set. Yeah, I, I kind of started as a drummer, but kind of like a garage drummer. You know, like mm -hmm. I just I always joked I was playing in bands before I even knew how to what a paradiddle was. You know, like I'll do it. You know, and yeah. you know, and um. But I think one of the most important things for me, and it's why I don't mind going long stretches without writing, is I really let the stories build up. Mm. And it, and I think this is probably true for a lot of people. It's why I couldn't write a song. I, I, I get an idea finally, you know. And a lot of times it's maybe I'll take a piece of my dad's artwork and I'll start sketching titles a lot of things happen in the shower, as you can imagine, like I'm just in there, that's the title. And mm -hmm. I know when it's ready and then the sketches, everything just, it's all there, you know, it's like I, and then I'm ready to get it out. And 
then there's no stopping it usually, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm really patient with it. But saying that, when we talk about the flow state, it's not like I, I don't ever really stop. That would be not true at all. I'm still kind of, you, you know, working on my studio, working, maybe I'm doing technique more, but I'm not, there's no expectation for writing a song. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go down and get these couple modules out. Let's see how these modules work with the this synth, you know, let's see. And I'm cataloging, and this is probably typical too. Um, it's very focused. All right, I'm, I'm cataloging. I might take one instrument and say, all right, there's three things I really like about this. I like how it does this. All right. And then when I'm ready, it's all just very flow state. And if it's not flow state, then I don't want to do it. But um, that's interesting because that's yeah. one of the things I was going to mention. It, it's similar to that. What I call it is change the method. So like if I get stuck working in a DAW, I switch to DAWless. If I've been working with live instruments, I switch to samples. Anything to kind of change the way I'm working because that helps me or trick my brain to get into the flow state. Because it's like, oh, this is novel, this is new, or use a new synth or use a new, like last week, using OctaveCat. I haven't been using a lot of synths lately. So I was really working on all those mod routings and it was very different from the normal way I work with the synth, just because the synth's UI was very old school compared to a lot of the stuff I've been working with. So I had to learn these things and it just got my brain working. I was like, oh, what if I do this? What if I do that? So I like to call it change the method. If you get stuck, just switch what you're doing. And I know Shady has talked about that too, where if he's working with guitar, he stops doing the guitar. And on that, he says, I do take time off in the summer and focus on more outdoor things. It definitely helps with my own creativity. If I do get stuck, I'm lucky enough to be working on releasing other artists' music. Yes, Shady Ridge Records has some great uh, artists on there. You should check it out, definitely. Um, but yeah, change the method. And then I've got one that is kind of universal and then a couple tips that I'll put kind of quickly together that are more, if you're like, for me, anecdotal, like as I do this for a living, things I do where... I need a break, but I can't take a break per se. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll just go through those really quick. And then the final one, I, I really want to talk with all of you about it. Um, and you'll see why. But uh, so I like to find ways to streamline every task. I map it out. I map out every project I'm working on because I usually have multiple at the same time. And I just set dates for like, I need this done on this day, this on that. And then each day I set times for each of that. Like, okay, I've got 30 minutes from 10.30 to 11 to fix the audio in this YouTube video. And then once that's done, hey, it's good. Like, it's got to be done. You know, just like get it out. And if I have to postpone it or something, then so be it. Uh, you forgive it. But yeah, so find ways to streamline. Set the times in each day for those things you need to get done. And then in doing that, map out all your projects and due dates and things like that. Um, anything... Oh yeah, and, and then finally for that, and this should pertain to everything, but it's not the one I was talking about earlier. It's just, sometimes you gotta just ride the wave of stress and creative limitations. Like right now, there's nothing I can change in what's happening in my external situations. Mm -hmm. They're all out of my control. So I can get bogged down and get upset about it. And sometimes I do, and that's okay. I have to, just like we were talking about with the previously, like recognize those thoughts. Don't just shut them down. Be like, yep, I'm feeling stressed out and I'm feeling out of control or something, but then just embrace it and move on. Like find the things you can control and work on that. Like I can work on music if I can set those times around all this stuff I'm doing. So that's when I'm going to do it. And if nothing comes out of it, okay. I'm not setting, like Eon Lake was saying, I'm not setting up for, I've got to make the biggest banger in 20 minutes because that's all I've got. No, I'm just like, I'm just going to mm -hmm. play this synth and do something. And if something, yeah. usually when I come in with that low expectation, I've got a song in 20 minutes, you know? But if I go in with the, I'm making a banger, by the end of it, I'm just like, everything sucks. I'm the worst musician ever. You know, like it's it's horrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that like existential crisis and dread just like shifts on yeah. it. <laughs> oh, you can, you can put your, it's, it's amazing the bad mood you can put yourself in. <laughs> If you have a bad, like you go down, I'm going to do some writing and you have like an hour or two and it's just dreadful and it carries with you. And you, I go upstairs and it's so obvious, like, what is wrong with you? What are you upset about? I'm like, that went oh. well, then I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, and it's and then the next day you go and it's all fine. But yeah, I love the hyper, you know, I wrote down kind of hyper efficiency. What Really what I meant is you get used to, okay, I got, I only have 20 minutes. Let's use it. What can I do yeah. in 20 minutes? Right. Okay. Well, I'm going to work on this one patch or I'm going to, I, I spent a lot of time. 
um, and I'm getting ready to do it again, but uh, just continually making the studio a flow state kind of for me. Uh, um, yeah. And I've talked about it now, right? Kind of making it fun, making it also efficient, you know, and it's weird how it just keeps getting better and better because I'm just, and some, so sometimes I just come down when I'm doing the drums, watching the movie, you know, and I'm, I'm also looking at like, yeah, that drum brute needs to get moved. Like, you know what it needs? <laughs> and I, you know, I stop and I run over and like, pause the movie. <laughs> and it's, it's just like, I'm just going to go, you know, um, hang out in the studio. And, um, yeah. And you're you know, setting up your, your area for success. Yeah, like, because like creative success, not not yeah. not success, but like I mean, yes, that because creative success is is a success, but you're setting up this area to work for you. Like I notice when my mm -hmm. shed starts getting dirty, I start getting more writer's block, and then I'll yeah. I won't realize it, but I'll be like, oh, I gotta clean. I clean, and the desk is like cleared up and stuff, and boom, ideas just start flowing. Right? You know? Yeah, you're so right. Just like oh yeah, when you're doing something else, you're like oh yeah the your mind's working and it's in a positive mood now. And then you're like, I could move this. I could do that. I could shift this around. And then you're just yeah. setting yourself up later for this open mind. But it's also training your mind that you can be in the studio or wherever you produce your music and you don't have to come out with musical gold every time you sit down there. Yeah. It kind of helps to release some of the pressure. I mean, yeah. for me, it helped to realize there are a number of different things I do in the studio and writing's only one of them. Right. So, you know, I mean, when I'm when I'm writing, I think, oh, if only I had more time to sort of catalog samples properly and to actually do some proper sound designs, save presets, and make sure I back them up. I don't really do any of the admin around around the music. And then, if I'm having real trouble and nothing's happening, it's <laughs> surely this is just the time to do a bit of admin, you know, and do a bit of sound design or you know, put your damn cables away or something, you know. Oh, yeah. And uh, invariably, you know, something happens, you know. And, and it, you, you don't have to be always doing the same thing. You can think, well, I want to do some writing. You try it, it doesn't work. You think, okay, it's a sound design session then. Fair enough. <laughs> right. And then yeah. you might come out with some really good sounds. And the next time you sit down, it's all happening again, you know, it's, well, I always find too for sound design, it requires playing chords or notes. And yeah. usually in that sound design and those chords you're experimenting to make stuff sound good, you're like, oh, what if I go this chord to this chord and then maybe this to this? And oh, now I've got a chord progression. Oh, now I've got a song. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's how it always happens. Yeah. I accidented a song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yeah. Those are the best kind of songs, though. Um, yeah. All right, gentlemen, I think we should get to the last one. And then we've got a couple little bits of news uh, to cover. But this one, I, I want to hear, let, let's be a little quick because we're short on time. But um, this one, I think, is one of the most important uh, because especially after reading those symptoms and signs of burnout, hmm. I think it's the best way to kind of mitigate that half mark or that halfway mark where it's isolation. And that's find community and and enjoy and celebrate others in the community's successes share yes. listen be happy for them positive attitude basically and positive thoughts i know we can get bogged down in you know comparisons and stuff like that but if you can just celebrate these things and know we're all on this journey of our own and we're all going at different times and routes and and all these detours and things like that but find a community if you're feeling burnout express that to your friends to the musical communities like we have a discord it's for everyone. It's in the description. We, if we're feeling burnout, we talk about it. We do things like that. We have a Twitter chat for patrons and, and we just talk about these things. And like yesterday I was sharing all of these things when I was saying, Hey, this is what we're talking about today in ADSN. And this is why, I mean, you know, it's like, I'm going through it and I want to talk with everyone and hear if we're, we're all going through these things and share it and just, you know, realize you're not alone. I think is the biggest thing. Because like I said, that's one of the ways that you start feeling like there's no time for non-business things. Then you start feeling isolated. Then you feel lonely. And then it just it piles on. So uh, I'm curious, David, what's your take on this? Well, yeah, I'm a big believer, first thing, in talking, communicating. It, it's made my life a lot more uh, fulfilling, whether it's in my family life, my work life, everything 
the more I get it out and talk and um, a lot of internal and dialogues going on, <laughs> but yeah. also external. Um, I just, it's, you know, life is, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing and we've got to like, you just can't let things bottle up. It's not healthy. I don't think, um, we are, <laughs> what's fascinating is we're very, we're all very unique, but we're also very similar. Mm -hmm. And when you realize that a lot of these stressors, it's actually happening all over. It's not, <laughs> you're not a freak, um, for lack of a better word, or weak person that is all complete nonsense it is and when and that's the thing we'll get again when it, that will get me in a very more aggressive when i hear people posturing like that you got to do this you got no 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 you got to do just the opposite you got to just nobody's yeah. saying not to work hard we're talking about uh, so yeah I, you know that's really you know one of the things that really comes to mind you know it, it's um um yeah, it's, it's, it's a journey and we're not all, like you said, somewhere, but we're, we're not all on the same place at all times. And somebody exactly. might just kind of hit this great creative spark and they put something out and just be happy for them. Right. Mm -hmm. And realize it has nothing to do with your own art. Right. Um, Can I just interject one yeah, thing too, awesome. really quick? I'm sorry, David. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I told you, I'll just keep I, I, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm sorry. I just, it's very, relevant to that is that mm -hmm. I also like to think of it this way. If someone else was able to have that happen, it can happen to you as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. like that's why I like to celebrate. No, I don't like to celebrate it because like, Oh, it'll happen to me. I just mean like it's possible. It's achievable. So instead of getting bogged down in the self thought and the, the, you know, like, uh, I'm not good at this. I'm not that just remember like someone else achieved it. It's possible. It's achievable. That's what I mean. Oh yeah. And there's not this finite space. That's the thing that there's, you know, and everybody's trying to achieve something a little different. So yet, but all, all these things can lead to that kind of, you know, I guess a little bit of negativity or, or make, you know, um, it, it, it's, you know, I'm a huge believer in supporting other people and it really, because, and I will just say this quickly, I, for a long time, I felt like nobody supported me. Right. And I mm -hmm. joked about the drummer's complex. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hilarious, right? But if there's something, you know, it's like, oh, you're going to write some songs. Oh, you know, listen to this guy, you know. Yeah. Um, and um, um, so I, I remembered how it felt. So I, my whole world kind of now revolves around community and, and, and support and, and it, it's cheesy, but the love comes back. And, um, and the stress level drops, right? Um, so I think we got a better chance of um, limiting the amount of burnout by just kind of doing what we're doing, you know, and yeah. being aware of it. So that's all I want to say. Yeah, Ian, like anything you want to add about community? I, I think you're right. I mean, the community is where you find it, but I find I'm one of those people I don't like to talk about problems a lot. I don't find it hugely helpful, but I find talking about other people's problems helps me more than talking about my problems, mm -hmm. if you see what I mean, which yeah. amounts to the same thing in that community can come, can be a good thing. And it's like you say, we are, good things can be happening for one person while someone else is in a bit of a, in a, bit of a rut. And it's kind of like... <laughs> The biorhythms are up and down, but there's invariably somebody with a bit of bounce. And it helps you remember that this is, this is something that everyone goes through. In fact, it's almost part of it. Yeah, It's it part is. of being a human. It's yeah. part of being alive. It's part of any artistic endeavor. It's part of you know being having any level of criticism about your output and all the rest of it, you know. We're all people and, and talking to other people helps you remember that sometimes, you know, and maybe that's, you know, all you need. Yeah. That and to go a little easy on yourself and maybe try and balance <laughs> things a bit better. Yeah. Yeah, you're spot on. A uh, little bit in the chat, we've got Shady Ridge saying, I try not to release too much over a period of time. It gives me room to breathe and explore other musical avenues. And then Bendu says, this is the discussion I needed to hear right now, guys. Thanks for this one. Yeah, I mean, 
we talked about this kind of for a selfish reason, but I really wanted to just share where I'm at right now and 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 how I'm working with it because I know it's something we all deal with. And yeah. uh, I, I I really appreciate just like Ian Lake was saying, like knowing you're not alone in this, that we're all in this together. We're all dealing with these things. So let's talk about it. Let's be together in it. Let's hear from each other and help each other through this. You know, I mean, that's that's the whole point of the show and and everything we do with audio nautic we always say together we grow it's it's not just the good things like it's good to share when we're having these existential doubts or crises and things like that because we're here for each other yeah 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 it's part of it whether you like it or not <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's i think it's important i know it's a difficult topic but it's something we all deal with and i think it's important to share and like i don't like to be very personal and share things and stuff like that. But I, I think it's important to know that we all go through these things and just to be there for each other and talk about it. So, you know, that's why we wanted to talk about it. It's a very relevant subject for a lot of us. Cause like David's saying, I mean, if you're a musician, you kind of got to wear every hat and that is very exhausting mm -hmm. and you have to learn how to do these things. And then it can get frustrating or you start getting hit by all these social media. Like, why isn't this doing well when it did well this time and this and that. And it's like, it's just easy to get bogged down in this negativity and get to this point. So um, hopefully, Bendu, we appreciate that it was helpful and hopefully it's helped everybody. Helpful. And um, if you're watching this back on YouTube or on the podcast apps, give it a thumbs up if you got some value from it. Leave a rating on Apple or Spotify. It helps a ton. Share the video, share the podcast if you think anybody is going through this and that this might help. It, it all helps a ton. We're always trying to reach new eyes and ears. But on the topic of community, and maybe Curtis will will laud me for this perfect segue. If he was here, he'd be like, oh. But anyway, <laughs> we have a Starstream Hangout this weekend. It's one of our patron uh, we're doing. Sorry, I shared the photo. Um, but yeah, patron Hangout, Sunday, August 6th, August 6th 11 a.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. UTC. It's the same time as the shows we do on Wednesdays for our patrons. Um, it's over on the Discord. There's a voice and video hangout so we'll be over there it's my wife's and i uh first anniversary so i will not be there but curtis and hopefully eon lake will be there hopefully eon lake will be there but uh but they'll be there if you guys want to hang out talk about this kind of stuff talk about anything that's the star streams are one of the patron exclusives we just hang out and talk about anything one time curtis was having trouble with his ableton template and i think it was hydro fighter and it might have been bendu too but a few of the patrons and eon lake we just talked about it, figured things out, and we just bring something to the table, talk about it. So if you're looking for that kind of community, um, you can head to the Patreon link in the description. And then we have one last bit of news, and it's more of a PSA, but uh, Bandcamp Friday is this Friday. Ah. Yes. So I, I'm going to post on the Audionautic Twitter probably tomorrow uh, a thread. So if anybody wants to share what they're working on, something new, you can put it there. But I just wanted to give a heads up, but also ask everybody what their latest is, if there's anything you want to share. If you're watching this back, put it in the comments if you've got something new, if you're watching before mm -hmm. Bandcamp Friday. Um, I do want to share that we have at Audionautic something new, uh, thanks to the last episode we did, the uh, Cherry Audio. We've got a, let me share it, Let's Go Galactic t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, here it is. So if you want to check that out, Audionautic, I think it's yeah audionauticrecords.bandcamp.com the link is in the description though and we'll be posting about it but yeah let's go galactic Ooh. uh it's the, the reverb from cherry audio that's on that when i was doing the demo i was like oh let's go galactic and i think it was bendu was like put that in the chat we were like yeah let's make a shirt so we've got it um we're we uh we really liked it but uh curtis made it over in printful and um so yeah we're ordering some ourselves so we'll have them to demo soon but um if you want to get one, that's where it is. Uh, Eon, like, do you have anything for Bandcamp Friday that you want to share? I don't. You know, I was toying with the idea of some merch myself, but um, ah. I haven't done anything yet. Let me know if you think there's any any need for it, people. But I do. I do. <laughs> I'd, I'd, yeah. Yeah. Maybe a Deep State CD. I don't know. You know, Audio Nauta could put it out. It, you know. All right. Well, I'm, I'm working on some, something else for Audio Nautic. <laughs> Okay, okay. The new news stuff. Okay, okay. David, what about you? Yeah. Anything for Bandcamp Friday? And uh, sorry, David, one sec. I led you on and then I just cut you off. But chat, let us know too if you've got 
chat let us know if you've got anything david what what do you got for bank Camp friday uh i don't have anything but i am thinking about doing some more um physical for a few of the uh, like my latest release i just did it digital but i keep you know sporadically selling tapes and stuff nice. of some old releases so I, I really like doing tapes so i'm thinking about kind of completing some of the um you know last four or five and well there's about two or three that i didn't do tape so i think i might try to get that um so i at least have that in the catalog because um i really love doing them they're really fun yeah i really like c90 as a format 245s <laughs> Yeah, like I mean, it. merch is just awesome. Any physical is, is nice to have. It's it's just something special. I mean, cool when people just, buy it too. Well, yeah, but it's it's nice to have something that's like for you, right? You know, mm -hmm. that, like that you can hold rather than the streaming yeah. or even a digital album. I mean, digital's great too, but it's nice to have something physical, like a tangible thing that's yours that connects you with the artist. Yeah. Oh yeah, that and, and that's kind of what I wasn't really trying to be snarky. I was serious. It's really fun to mail them out, yeah, and, and send out that physical, you know, that cassette or whatever, or the CD. I just and hate people. going to the post office. I know. Well, <laughs> yeah, there's, so that's a fun bit. there's sure. some tricks to it, you know. I I can do some if they're small enough. I can just mail them, you know. <laughs> slam a bunch of stamps on it. Yeah, I just office. call it a day. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Over on uh, my band camp, I've got just a few CDs left of this Forever Becoming oh, looks nice. set that I did. So mm -hmm. I, I did a live set of the four Forever Becoming tracks that are kind of very important. I, I wrote the first two right before I got married, and then these two were written right before uh, my first child's birth. So uh, they, they have a lot of meaning to me, but I did a live set on band camp. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of the patrons came on. It was a lot of fun, but there's a CD. There's two or three left, I think. Um, so if anybody wants to grab that, it's on sunwarper.bandcamp.com. And then, of course, my year-long project, Music for Imagine Landscapes. We're having a lot of fun with that, where we do a new song every month. And it's it's nice to hear from everybody as I'm working on these songs and putting them out. It's a it's a weird release cycle, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun to do. Um, but yeah, Eon Lake, what's your Bandcamp, if anybody wants to head there? It's eonlake.bandcamp.com. Perfect. And David? It should be Ace of Stripe, so right in the name, okay. yeah. All right, .bandcamp.com, right? Yeah. Perfect, yeah. And then uh, we've got audionauticrecords.bandcamp.com and then sunwarper.bandcamp.com. Bendu says that my friend and I have a punk ambient project called, is it Semiotic Ghosts? Yeah. And we're releasing a track on Friday. Oh, very cool. Bendu, can it's you... Nice um, yeah, that's awesome. Can you put the <laughs> Bandcamp in the chat, if you don't mind, if you're willing? And then... Um, Shady says, sweet Ben. And Shady, I think it's shadyridge.bandcamp.com. Correct me if it's Shady Ridge Records, but they've got new stuff all the time. And uh, like he was saying for his own music, when he takes breaks and focuses on doing the art and things like that, it's a great label. I would highly recommend checking it out. Um, but yeah, does anybody, if anybody else wants to share their Bandcamp, I don't think YouTube enables links when non audionautic posts it. Like if I post a link, it will share it as a clickable link, but Everybody else, just put it there. We can copy and paste it or something. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we call it a day? No, I'll say I feel a bit better. Yeah, good, great discussion. Yeah, yeah. David, I'm, I'm so glad you were able to come on. It's always great yeah, to have you great, on. Yeah. And um, yeah. it's, it's awesome. great to talk about these things. And it's just... It's great to hear everybody's own unique perspective on all these topics and uh don't worry everybody we'll be back to gear and demos and all that stuff next week yeah, yeah. we did we did about three gear heavy episodes and and to be quite honest they're very stressful stressful on the back end like for me i have to have a two computer setup demoing on one computer while i'm running all the you know changing all the camera angles and doing all that josh has to do all the stuff on the back end there um so those are stressful they're a lot of fun and we've gotten a lot of feedback about them and, and we love doing it but um yeah I, I thought it would be good to kind of take it back take a step back talk about a little more philosophical stuff so if you're watching this live or back or in the discord just let us know if you like these kind of talks um if they're worth it for you um they definitely like Ian, like i was saying he feels a little better he said but i i agree it's it's nice to just talk these things through with fellow artists um so yeah, just let us know. And Shady says he's got some stuff coming out this month, a couple items from the label. So very cool. Um, if you, 
to change from Bandcamp, if you're looking for new music and you are a streamer, we have a mm. uh, Audionautic Radio playlist on Spotify. I just updated it, but I didn't post the update yet, but it's a massive. I think I changed 20 or 30 songs because I neglected it for about a month. And I finally updated it. So it's got a fresh new rotation, lots of great independent chill electronic music. Um, so if you're looking for some new music, check it out. It's in the description. Um, but yeah, we'll be back next week. Hopefully Curtis will be back with us. Um, David, you're always welcome. All patrons, of course, are uh, are you. welcome. And um, I know Curtis and Neon Lake will see you guys at Starstream, but I unfortunately won't be able to make it. <laughs> no. My wife would not forgive me if I missed it. So <laughs> be your last wedding anniversary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. This it streams with our patrons. It posts as a YouTube video after once I edit it, and then we put it on the podcast platforms at midnight. So if you're watching it back, give it a thumbs up, give it a rating on what is it, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Yeah.